Two former cabinet ministers are once again facing allegations of irregular payments following their resignation over controversial payment to city businessman Hassan Ibasa Jabalaba, amounting to 142 billion shillings. This time, they are defending themselves for allegedly sanctioning a German firm, Murbag International, to undertake production of Uganda's national identity cards. The two are former finance minister Saida Bumba and former attorney general Professor Kedu Makubuya. The Parliamentary Committee on Defense and Internal Affairs is investigating how Bumba and Makubuya single sourced and sanctioned payment of over 150 billion shillings to Murubag International. The government of Uganda signed an agreement with Murubag International amounting to 64 million euros, but over 80% amounting to 51 million euros and approximately 150 billion shillings has so far been paid. The project has since 2010 stalled with only 409 identity cards printed. The troubled professor Kidu Makubuya was grilled but declined to divulge any information, claiming he was not in possession of any documents since he left office. You know, it is easy if you are still sitting. I wouldn't be coming here to say, give me time, if I was the sitting attorney general. Uh -uh. I would just come and answer because I would be the one in charge. But I hand it over. He has promised to pitch camp at his former office on Wednesday this week so that he can be availed with documents to enable him adequately defend his actions in an informal position. But Bumba did tell the defense committee that the money was purely for procurement of IT equipment and training of staff. When we were there as assessors, we looked at the technology to one looked wonderful. They pro pro produced uh, dummy IDs. We all got the dummy IDs. We looked nice. The money was acquired in the form of a loan request from the central bank to handle what Bumba claims was a classified expenditure because of the security nature of the project. Honorable, what was the purpose of acquiring this equipment? I think the implementer and the requisitioner would better handle that. Because I didn't know that they, whether, whether they didn't have money in the ministry or elsewhere to do the operationalization. I had not looked at the budget for operationalization. And for me, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm ignorant about IT. Why didn't you avail resources for operationalization? The taxpayers didn't pay enough. That's the answer I should put down on the <laughs> Because we operate a cash budget and money is collected from taxpayers. The equipment, however, is currently gathering dust at stores in Entebbe, while other equipment have since allegedly been stolen from the electoral commission stores. Earlier, the deputy governor Bank of Uganda, Luis Kasekende, had briefed the lawmakers on how the bank affected the payment. By March 2012, the Bank of Uganda had effected payments totally euro 51 million to Moluba. She instructed us to effect an immediate payment. Ever since Parliament appropriated funds through a supplementary budget, a balance of 14 million euros remains unpaid and yet the central bank has closed the accounts. This has raised fears of a legal battle between the company and the government of Uganda. And the government is going to pay a lot of money in terms of penalties. Close to 30 billion shillings are going to be paid in terms of taxes. Close to 8 billion is going to be paid as penalties for not meeting our contractual obligations. The committee is due to meet President Yori Museveni before the end of this week for his input before Parliament takes a decision on who should be held responsible. Jingo Francis, NTV Parliament.